The Musician's Map eBook is the new definitive guide on building success in music. Whether you're just starting out or you're looking for gigs or you're trying to make a career, the Musician's Map eBook is right for you. The Musician's Map eBook contains 20 years of music industry experience distilled into a 40,000 word guide to achieving your goals in music. Can't read? Get the Musician's Map audiobook. Four and a half hours of author Kane Power speaking directly into your own ears. That's right, even you can still benefit from the Musician's Map Guide to Building Success in Music. Head to musiciansmap.org forward slash books right now to get your copy of the Musician's Map ebook or audiobook. Get it today and receive a special one time only offer of a personal pat on the back from author and podcast personality Kane Power. The Musician's Map ebook and audiobook is also available at Amazon and Audible if you feel like supporting those giant websites as well. The Musician's Map ebook, your guide to building success in music. Proof of purchase required for Pat on the Back. To receive a Pat on the Back, you must travel to Raglan, New Zealand. Travel not included in purchase price. It's the third instalment of Our Worst Gigs, where previous guests of the podcast recount their most terrible, disheartening, frustrating, and hilarious gig stories. We often ride a pretty positive wave in terms of content on this podcast, so every now and then it's fun to have a chat about the times when things didn't quite go to plan. We've all been there, and if you haven't, rest assured that you will. This time we've got Thai terrorist cells, disgruntled fans, sexual predators, sexual assault, technical difficulties, wardrobe malfunctions, projectile beers, noise restrictions, long drives to empty venues, and a man covered in Marmite. A few guests were compelled to share more than one story, and some shared bad stories that turned out good. It's funny, it's sad, it's light-hearted, and it's serious. It's our worst gigs. First up, from episode 30, is Mark D. Clivelo. We did a gig in Bangkok, and it was myself, a singer from the States named Lady Alma. She's a really dope, soulful house singer. And this drummer, he's actually Australian, named Nick. There's the three of us. So we get to Bangkok, and we're singing the Sheraton, and they have the, like they put the newspaper on your door handle and this nice fabric thing the next morning. So I get, you know, we get in, we get in at nighttime. Mm. So in the morning, I'm like, grab this newspaper off my door and open it up. And the newspaper, the Bangkok Post, says Judgment Day in huge letters across the front of the newspaper. It just says Judgment Day. Mm. So that day, I'm not sure the exact details, something like the Supreme Court was going to dissolve the government. And um, the military were concerned about this because they didn't know what was going to happen with the people. So they brought like 50,000 extra troops into Bangkok City. Whoa. No one knows what's going to happen, Right. And there'd been like these junior kind of guerrilla groups in the south, you know, firebombing and going around their motorbikes and doing shit, right? Yeah. It was all it was happening. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it all looked normal outside, but quite quiet. You know, people went out and out in droves. Mm. So we played this gig and it was a really dead gig. You know, there were couples there, but, but barely any couples. It was clear we'd, we'd been affected by the, the news, right? Yeah. And actually rewinding back a little bit before i went on this trip people said to me when you go to thailand don't ask for weed just forget about smoking for like four days i can do that cool yeah yeah, yeah. so we're playing this gig and um there are really straight looking couples dressed nice watching and then there's four young kids leaning against the wall next to the band listening and like one's got like a asian afro and they're dressed like street basically yeah and so we finished playing and they come over and they're like, man, that was wicked. We love that. I was like, yo, do you have any weed? <laughs> and my man's like, yeah, I have, I have a joint. I was like, okay, cool. Let me finish packing down and I'll come up to the car park. Yeah. And Alma, she's a smoker too. So she's like, yeah, you know, cool. So we go out to the car park and with these four young guys and have the worst joint I've had in my life. <laughs> I'm like, cool, do you have any more? Yeah. <laughs> like, well, yeah, and our friend's place five minutes away. Five minutes drive. I'm like, cool. Can we go? It's like, yeah. So this is like probably two in the morning by now. So me, Nick, and Alma get in this car with these four guys. There were seven of us in this, seven of us in this car. It's yeah. crazy. 
and we drive for five minutes. But that five minutes is half an hour. And every few minutes we'd stop somewhere and they'd knock on a door. Be like, oh, no, that's not it. I'm thinking, wait, this is five minutes to your mate's place? Like, don't yeah. you know where your mate lives? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after half an hour, knock on this place. Yeah, this is it. Come on. So we go in, go up to the top floor of the skyscraper. It's all, it's all like raining and shit outside by now too. Yeah. It's like three in the morning or whatever. And this guy opens the door, young guy, and I see like a mattress on the floor in the room. That's all. So like, okay. I'm like thinking, I'm thinking it's students or some shit like mm. that. So I go in the living room and there's like ceiling to floor windows. It's thunder and lightning outside and the room's all dark. The TV glowing. It looks like kind of... Like Blade Runner? Well, I can only... A bit like Blade Runner. Kind of, it looks like it's kind of bric-a-brac around. It's like just random shit. Yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, it's like art students, whatever. And there's about yeah, maybe six or seven guys there. Mm. So now it's about 12 or 13 guys. And firstly, I notice there's no girls. Secondly, I notice that everyone is tattooed from their neck to their feet. And they're all young. I'm like, cool, art students. <laughs> so, then, <laughs> so then we sit down on the we sit down on the floor and they bring out some weed and some whiskey, really crappy weed and whiskey, and just having a laugh and talking and whatever. And and we're sitting in a circle. And Nick, the drummer, he points just behind me. He's like, Bro, what's that? I turn around. Why are there two AK forty sevens right beside the wall? Like right Shit. here where I am. And we're like, yo, what's up with that? And one of these Thai kids, he's like, yeah. You know, he makes, makes a gun shape with his arms. He's like, yeah, death to all white people. <laughs> and like, this is interesting. So Alma, she's sitting beside me. She's like, Mark, Mark, you know, we should, we should go. Like, yeah, we should go. So we're just like, okay, cool. We got to thank you. It's been great. Hanging, we got to go. We broke out. Our, our hotel was five minutes away, literally. So we just got lost on the way there. Yeah. But... That was a junior guerrilla mafia Holy cell. Holy shit, well, not man. mafia, junior guerrilla like terrorist cell. Yeah, yeah. Of. I mean, they even had like there was one point behind Nick. He he turned around. He's like, "What's that?" And they it was like a C four kind of carrying case thing. Like, holy shit. I mean, it was for real. Yeah. Um. So that was interesting. It's <laughs> an interesting gig story. <laughs> <laughs> shit, man. It could have ended differently, but it ended that way. It ended yeah. All happy as Larry. Check out Mark at mdcl.tv and facebook.com forward slash mdcl music. Now we've got Lani Perkis from New Zealand band Elemino P, who is the guest for episode 41. For me, it probably has the funniest ones. Um, oh, well, an Elemino P one, Gibbo jumped, we were at a dress up party and it, the theme was Kiwi icons or something. And somebody came as Marmite. And so. <laughs> They just wore some undies and covered themselves in Marmite. Oh, my God. And Gibbo, this is when he was in his wearing all white emo stage, um, he stage dived and landed on this Marmite guy. <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> he was just covered in Marmite all over his white suit. <laughs> nice. But, yeah, um, but Foamy did some real funny ones. Before we had proper gear, we'd, uh, we used to carry around a bucket of lemons. I don't know why we didn't take the lemons out, but it was like a 10-litre bucket, or like an old paint, you know, lid, and that was our snare stand for ages. We did, <laughs> like, when I think about it now, we didn't even take the lid off to give it air to move around underneath. It was just sitting on the top of this bucket. And one time we got to this party we were playing. So we used to just play every weekend, anywhere we could. We'd just yep. like turn up in our station wagon, unload the gear, and we'd forgotten all the drum stands. So we, oh, we had the hi-hat stand. So we had bucket of lemons, a hi-hat stand, and I had to hang the cymbals from the garage roof with rope. And so whenever Kat would hit them, they'd swing as well, of course. <laughs> yep. but, but not only that, she forgot <laughs> her drumsticks. And so I had to crack a branch off a tree and get a <laughs> and get a wooden spoon from the kitchen. And we, oh my so, god! Yeah. So she had bucket of lemons, snare stand, hanging cymbals, and a twit like a just like a branch and a wooden yeah. spoon. <laughs> I'm impressed. It's yeah, industrious. It was. <laughs> Check out LMNOP at facebook.com forward slash we are LMNOP. Next up, from episode 43, it's Joe Branton from Brighton progressive band Polymath. 
a worse gig story there are plenty there's there's one that's found its way onto the internet i think the video has been named like polymath the best recovery ever and i'm really really glad that they viewed it as that but uh, essentially it was, this would sound way less awful than I assure you it was in, in real life. It was a, uh, you know, we're, we're crescendoing. It's the end of our set and we're starting the crescendo and my bass stops working. And so I, I can't work out what it is. I get down on my pedal board. We start doing the, you troubleshoot. So you go pedal by pedal, you're checking your power, you're checking your patch cables. And as I do that, my guitarist, Tim, he comes down to sort of like, lend a hand i work out where my problem is i get back up and tim's guitar has cut out (laughs) so (laughs) so now his guitar is not working and so he gets back down to try and work that out and literally as he is working that out the chain on our drummer's kick pedal uh (laughs) (laughs) breaks (laughs) yeah amazing it's this it's this wonderful round of sort of this whole crescendo is held by one musician at a time yeah. at certain points <laughs> whilst every other musician is completely unable to play. And I'm very glad it was uploaded as the best recovery ever, but it literally wasn't. It was awful. Uh, it was it was uh, probably the worst crescendo ever and the worst show we've ever played. So, yeah. And did you crescend? <laughs> we did. <laughs> We did eventually make it to that point, but yeah. I think what was supposed to be like a, a three or four minute crescendo ended up being about 10 minutes. So, yeah. yeah. You can find Polymath online at facebook.com forward slash Polymath Brighton and we are polymath.bandcamp.com. Now we've got Lisa Crawley from episode 36. I was doing the national anthem for a rugby game and I was singing God Save the Queen and I was so nervous it was 40 seconds and I was just so nervous about forgetting the words because my brain was just like overthinking things and had this really extreme anxiety around national anthems because something always seems to go wrong when I do one yeah but I'm like I shouldn't let that bad experience stop me from nailing the next one but I never learn so there's always something goes wrong after this one I was like no more so I flew to Sydney this is before just when I was moving to Melbourne I flew to Sydney and I had only my Chuck Taylor's and I went to the shop and bought a really like fancy dress to sing the anthem and fancy shoes way taller than I normally buy but she's like yeah they look great so then I put them in my bag she she gave me the shoes a different set of shoes it turns out and I went to put them on and the other singer who was doing the Australian anthem had this whole team around her she had a makeup artist she had like a manager, and I was just there by myself. Um, it was quite Bridget Jones, sort of like just trying to get ready and not look terrible. Yeah, I shouldn't say not terrible. Make myself look presentable and you know a little bit glamorous for the for the song. Went to get my shoes on because the sound check I did in my normal shoes, stupidly, and it turns out I got two right shoes. So <laughs> <laughs> I had two right shoes on these giant heels. Yeah. And not only that, they were both right feet, but one was two sizes too big as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So that was pretty bad, but I couldn't wear my Chuck Taylors and the other girl, she didn't have any other shoes. And I said to her, like, oh, my goodness. Okay, so I had to stick tissue paper down one and wear two right feet and just kind of waddle onto the field. And I said to her, she's like, oh, it's so, oh, that's such a shame, babes. Like, I'm like, yeah, let's just walk on together really slowly. But she just raced on and so oh, I was, no. like, waddling on behind her looking yeah. like hopefully people, no one else noticed. My dress was quite long, but I was like, oh, my God. So anyway, yeah, that was pretty unpleasant. Um, I'm just going to throw in another one. Yeah. There was another one where I was doing um, a tribute show for The Cure, you know, the band yeah. The Cure, at the Corner Hotel. And I'd done a Elliot Smith tribute thing that went really well there. But I got given two songs I knew really well and two that I didn't know so well. But I had one song where I had a cue sheet just on the ground in case I blanked. And... um a girl dressed up like the singer from The Cure was really, like saw me look down or something and got really cross. And there was probably about 500 people there or something. And she walked up and we leaned over to the monitor and picked up the words and was just laughing and held them in front of my face. And I was trying to be a good sport and I just was like, ha very funny, mm. singing along. And then she ripped up the sheet of paper in front of everyone and just like threw it everywhere. 
like confetti. Oh my god! And I was just like, why would you do that? Like, yeah. it was like a fifteen dollars tribute show. Everyone was in the same boat. Yeah, like you like the band, you do your best, you have some fun. But yeah, I just felt really awful after that. I had a few glasses of wine and I went to try and find her just to understand why she would do that, but yeah. I couldn't find her. So, oh no. Or maybe yeah, I, I guess she just thought everyone loved the Cure and was obsessed like her. So how dare I miss a couple of words potentially, you know? Yeah. I tried to play along with it, but yeah, I just felt really like I felt pretty gross after that. Yeah. It was just really nasty. Yeah, that was yeah. up there. I don't know. I've probably got much worse ones that I just can't <laughs> think of right now that I've had therapy I for know or if, something. If you sung the anthem right, you must have. Oh, yeah, it was okay. The anthem was fine. Okay. Yeah. Good. Check out Lisa at facebook.com forward slash Lisa Crawley Music and lisacrawley.com. Next up is Julia Watt from Melbourne band Moody Beaches, among others. Julia was a guest on episode 37. There was one that I, I, was, I spoke about recently with some friends. I, like when I was 20 and turned 21, I played in this all-girl cover band and we did like a four-month contract in Abu Dhabi in the Middle East and then we played for three months in South Korea in Seoul. And when we were in Seoul or, you know, South Korea in general, it's not really an amazing place I didn't find it to be an amazing place to be a woman because women's rights are way down the ladder. So it was, you know, the richest man made all the rules. So whoever that was, you had to abide by what they said, which naturally I have a hard time with. <laughs> and uh, I got in, yeah, into a few disagreements with our, our bosses at the hotel. Um, but there was this one night we were playing, <clears throat> we, you know, we played top 40 and, Western songs because that's what we were hired to do and this one day this Japanese businessman came into the bar and he was quite drunk he came up and he you know requested this traditional Japanese song and we're like oh really sorry but we don't we don't know that and he went up to the bar manager and started you know cracking the shits and then he came over yelled at us like play my song and then he had a full glass of beer he threw it at us because we didn't know his song. And then um, the bar manager came over to us and was like, why aren't you playing his song? <laughs> We're like, oh my God, like we don't know it. <laughs> but it was just like that hierarchy and like you're, you know, you're at the bottom and you're, you're a real shit kicker and play oh my his God. song. Yeah, and I just was like, this is, the worst and I mean yeah then during a set break um he came I think there was this assumption that anyone that was a performer was also a prostitute so this same guy came up to me grabbed me on the boobs was like I want you and I, was, and I shoved him in the shoulders and the bar manager came up to me and kicked me out of the pub for disrespecting him <laughs> So that's probably up there <laughs> with one of my worst gig experiences. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. How? How does that even oh, happen? Good times. Ah, <laughs> oh, look, I don't know. Yeah. Shit. Needless to say, I'm not really planning any more trips to uh, play in Seoul anytime yeah. soon. <laughs> oh my God. Check out Moody Beaches at facebook.com forward slash Moody Beaches and moodybeaches.bandcamp.com and you'll find links to Julia's other projects Hot Wings, Party Pest, La Bastard and Hannah and Jesse Lee in the podcast description. Now, from episode 32, it's Serena Cherry, vocalist and guitarist for Bristol post-hardcore band Svalbard. The one that sticks out in my mind sticks out because it's really bad. Um, we played a festival in Germany at um, in Kiel, so North Germany, two years ago, and I had to stop the show mid, like halfway through playing a song, because someone in the crowd tried to lift up my skirt and take up skirt photos of me, um, which is a new one. Like that oh never happened before. Yeah, so the guy eventually got removed by security and I think he's been banned from the venue uh, which is good but um, 
I just, I mean, I still, I reflect on it now and I can't believe that it happened. Like, I can't believe someone thought it was okay to try and do that. And it really, um, it made me really conscious uh, about performing on stage now. Mm. Like, I'm always really wary of um, what I wear and sort of uh, where I'm placing, you know, my, my legs or if there's someone who's kind of, a bit too close with the camera and stuff so yeah I didn't used to think about those things but then something like that happens and you do yeah. and yeah um that was the worst <laughs> experience oh. that I've ever had that's awful um I don't really know what to say about that oh no it's okay there's not really anything that can be said like yeah. shit things happen <laughs> yeah yeah they do and people are shit Check out Svalbard at svalbard.bandcamp.com and facebook.com forward slash Svalbard UK. Now it's Henry De Jong from Kiwi metal band Alien Weaponry. Henry was a guest on episode 42. We had absolutely packed out the venue. It was actually at the Ding Dong Lounge in Auckland. So um, yep. I think it's got a 120 capacity and I think we got 135 people in there. Yeah. Plus all the band members. Yeah. And we had two support bands with us, so that was <laughs> quite a crowded night. So Lewis ended up, his battery went flat in his guitar, and pretty much he had to wade his way through this crowd, holding his guitar above his head in order to <laughs> get to the green room, which was all the way through and kind of out, kind of right at the back. And yeah. then, you know, get obviously his, his spare guitar and, and bring it back up stage. And, <laughs> of course, on his way back, he ends up stuck behind this absolutely huge bloke who was, <laughs> it, it's almost like the guy had hearing damage or something because he was shoving him and saying, bro, can you move, please? Move. And he spent probably a good 30 seconds to a minute there just trying to get this guy out of the way. <laughs> Because yeah. he, he he couldn't bloody move, and the guy was like literally walking back into him, and um, <laughs> yeah, and it, it probably took him like a good five minutes to get his guitar. Well, me and Ethan just kind of sat on stage, you know, just having little jams and stuff, and people kind of were sitting there twiddling their fingers and looking bored, <laughs> and it was like, yeah, 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 it was just a really really awkward kind of, <laughs> and and we were like, where the fuck is Lewis? <laughs> Check out Alien Weaponry at facebook.com forward slash alien weaponry and alienweaponry.com. Next, we have the guest from episode 34, Gussie Larkin from New Zealand group Mermaidens. So we went to Australia last year and um, we had this show booked in Canberra. It was built up as um, it was going to be the best show of the tour was this house party that these people were putting on and we we're kind of like, oh, so we have to drive about seven hours from Melbourne to Canberra. But, you know, it's, it's going to be the best show of the tour and it's going to, it's going to make, it's just going to make the tour. It's going to make everything financially viable. Yeah. Yeah. And so we we're like, great, really stoked. It was like at the end of the tour, drove all the way to Canberra, met up with Kane Strang and his band and we're like at the house, like sort of getting ready for this house party. And it just, yeah, it just kept getting later and later. And just there was no one there, like no one there apart from the housemates. Oh, shit. And, and, the, and they kept kind of reassuring us like, oh, no, no, I've told, I've told this friend they're going to come and, and this person's going to come. And it was grand final weekend, which – we were like, that's not a thing, but apparently it is a thing for everyone, even if you're not into uh, rugby or league or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, so then we both played sets just basically to each other's bands oh, in no. the weirdest city in Australia. <laughs> and it was just, like, so memorable and just just weird and kind of horrible, but then great at the same time yeah yeah and then we had to drive all yeah. the way back to melbourne <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the next day <laughs> and yeah yeah <laughs>
Check out Mermaidens at mermaidens.bandcamp.com and facebook.com forward slash mermaidensband. Now we've got Stan Bicknell from episode 35. I mean, I've had some shockers, but due to my state, you know, <laughs> so there's yeah. that side of it. <laughs> or there's just like, I had a snare stand collapse on me and at the time I thought it was the biggest fucking deal in the world and I remember like stopping mid-song, stopping the song, bro. I probably could have just like held it with my knees and I was like, does anyone have a snare stand? <laughs> I was so dramatic. There was maybe like 100 people, 150 people. There was the back bar at Diggers. Yeah. <laughs> and I did this big announcement. Does anyone have a snare stand? I don't know, just all the usual stuff like that. Mm. Things like forgetting parts. I mean, dropping sticks. I played at my friend Stevie's wedding with his band because he couldn't play in it, but he wanted his band at his wedding just a few weeks ago. And uh, I dropped sticks three times, man. <laughs> you know, just shit like that. Yeah. Um, I've had uh, backing tracks completely stop that had clicks, you know, mm. and I'm like, fuck, this is going to be interesting. I've had bass players trip over the chord of the backing track and then 40 seconds later realize, plug it back in. We're still on the click. <laughs> Shit like that. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, just all the usual stuff, man. I mean, we've had gear lost. We've had anything that you th like that can happen does happen. Needing to take a shit while you're playing, um, being sick when you play, man, being absolutely hung over and actually having to get off the drums and go and throw up and then come back and play, you know. Go on then. What's that one? <laughs> well, that was basically that, but that was a jazz gig in Hamilton. That wasn't anything of like... Um, that was like, I used to do a regular jazz gig every two weeks at this, this place in um, jazz, not that I can play jazz, but that's what it was called. <laughs> we used to do like interpretations of the, yeah, of the Ren and Stimpy theme song and things like that, yeah. but like jazzified yeah. and just had a really big night the night before. And I remember I was so friggin' lazy. All I took was my ride cymbal and my bass drum and my snare. And then I had, at one point, I wouldn't even play my bass drum. I had my knee, my leg right up on the bass drum and my leg, my body resting on my thigh, leaning forward and just doing a pitiful job of holding the beat together. And then yeah, I had to get up and go throw up and then come back. <laughs> <laughs> just stupid, obnoxious shit, you know? Yeah. Um, but that, that was, like, we're talking when I was like 20. So yeah. really, really, you know, real long. I, I'm not like that at all now and I'm definitely a lot more proficient and make sure all my I's are dotted and my T's are crossed when I have to do stuff, <laughs> you know? Cool. Check out Stan at instagram.com forward slash Stan Bicknell and facebook.com forward slash Stan Bicknell drummer. Next up, it's Sam Holdham from Kiwi rock band Skinny Hobos. Sam was a guest on episode 39. The worst gig we did was just sad because we played to 20 people in a venue that fit 400 and I booked it. So that was just sad rather than worst. I think the most interesting one was probably playing at a venue called Rec, which is in the Auckland's Bread Mart CBD. The gig itself was actually awesome. We had a great turnout. We sold a lot of tickets. That was a really good night with a really good lineup. But... Every time you play a venue for the first time, you learn something new about it. And that one, I learned that the logistics of that place for a full band are not great. It's in the CBD. And that night was one of the heaviest storms that Auckland had seen <laughs> in a long time. Yeah. So I had to manage to maneuver the van into a space where it was close enough to shelter. But we had a train of people running in and out of the van, running gear through the rain, and then we got in and set up and then discovered that we couldn't sound check until 8 o'clock because there was a business upstairs from the venue that <laughs> basically didn't like it. And if you were going to make noise before 8 o'clock, your gig was going to get shut down. Thing is, I hadn't been told any of this by the promoter. I learned this on the night. Yep. So I'm going there sitting. My gig's supposed to start at 9 o'clock, but I have to sound check at 8. How the hell is this going to work? <laughs> then the door person didn't show up because her house had flooded. So we had to get two of the band people to do the door all night. It was just, it was stressful. It was a minor nightmare, but we got through it. Yeah. <laughs> at, at the end of the day, it was awesome. Yeah. My other worst gig, the worst gig, which is not a Skinny Hobos gig, was a time we played at a sharing shed in Wanaka with one of my, my bands in Dunedin, and my bassist literally fell off the stage and like flat back on the floor at one point. But the best part was that he was still playing his bass when he hit the ground. <laughs> Check out Skinny Hobos at facebook.com forward slash skinny hobos and skinnyhobos.bandcamp.com. And to finish off the third Our Worst Gigs compilation, we've got Cara Jeffries from London band Marine. Cara was a guest on episode 33. 
I really want to tell you a really good gig story, you know? That's what I want. I want to finish on a really nice positive note. Yeah, cool. Um, okay, no, I'm going to tell you two. I'm going to tell you a horror story, and then I'm going to tell you a nice one. Okay. We played a gig in London at Paper Dress Vintage, and it was it was an interesting show for me personally because for some reason... A group of guys, while I was waiting outside with my guitar and just taking a breather before I went into the venue, for some reason a group of guys like shouted a bunch of stuff at me and then they chucked eggs at me and broke eggs all over my nice dress oh my and my God. guitar. Yeah. And I was like furious and sad and like all sorts of... I was just really upset. Anyway, went in with all this like fresh fury and i just had the most amazing gig you know i just felt so charged and i wasn't expecting it i guess all my emotions were at the surface or something because i wasn't expecting to have a good time because i was so upset yeah and i just loved that gig and i think i I don't think it necessarily started with me but i think it was a very a good gig for all of us you know for marine yeah then we played a gig in Germany at a place called Schokoladen. I think it was our first tour in Germany. And we spent all day hand drawing CD covers, like each one an individual piece of art by wow. each band member. Yeah. Yeah, for like 50 CDs. We spent like so long in this cafe. And then we went to this gig and we just thought well, we couldn't be any more tired from the day, you know, like an early flight and this crazy day of burning cds and then making sleeves and um this place in berlin it, it's got disco balls so many disco balls on the ceiling it's just full of amazing enthusiastic people and it was just packed and um i mean nothing particularly exciting happened except that a few people had heard our music before and i think it might be the first time anybody sang along and that was kind of amazing that something yeah. that came out of your head was now in somebody else's head. We had just a great show, despite kind of weird sound. Because, you know, the sound isn't necessarily always the thing. It's not like all our favourite gigs, we had great sound, you know, or anything like that, as as you know. Like, yeah. It's like vibe. and So the vibe that night was at its absolute maximum, I think. And, and we spent all night sort of waltzing under the disco balls. And there's like a... They put up the band in the basement in the wine cellar and it's all like painted crazy colours. And yeah, there was a lot of whiskey went went amiss <laughs> that night. <laughs> cool. And it was just a really nice starry night together yeah. of um, boozing and having fun and, and, and making bootleg CDs. So I think that might be one of my favourites. Oh, nice. You're right. That was a nice way yeah. to end the, end the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You see? Check out Marine at facebook.com forward slash we are Marine Marine and we are Marine.com. And that's all for this week. Back to regular programming next week. Probably. I want to thank all my guests for sharing their stories. You'll find links to everyone's websites in the episode description. The artist of the week this week is Toby and Wigwe. Check him out at facebook.com, Toby from the SWAT, and tobynwigwe.com. And that's T O B E N W I G W E. This podcast and the website musiciansmap.org is dedicated to sharing knowledge and advice about music and the music industry. It's all about community, honesty, and positive progress. The experiences, stories and advice shared on the podcast are given freely with the hope that you can relate to them and benefit from them. If you've found this podcast enjoyable or useful, make sure to check out the Musician's Map ebook and audiobook about building success in music. You'll find it at musiciansmap.org forward slash books, Amazon and Audible. And buying a copy of the book directly contributes to the continuation of this podcast. There's also a free ebook, How to Get Your Music Heard. Go to musiciansmap.org forward slash free dash book to get your copy. If you have a suggestion for the podcast or for the YouTube channel, or you just want to get in touch and say hello, please do so via the Musicians Map Facebook group or by email at kane at musiciansmap.org. Thanks for listening and stay positive. 